How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I'm back for another comic book video. I was originally planning on taking the month of January off and coming back in February, but one of my subscribers sent me a request, and I figured, hey, let's do this one. He said that I should do a top 10 list video of heroes from the golden age with green in their name. This was interesting and not the easiest thing to find. Uh, I had to go through all the golden age publications I know to find these. There's a lot of heroes who wear green but not quite as many with the name green in their name but I did find 10. So this is going to be a list video slash golden age spotlight video. I'm not going to go into as much detail as I do in my spotlights because there's 10 people on this list. So let's go ahead and get started with the first three. Now the reason I included these as the first three on the list, 10, 9, and 8, is because when you say green, these are the first three that you most commonly think of. They are Golden Age, but they're the most popular Golden Age with green, which is why I wanted to include them first so I can put some more lesser well-known heroes on the rest of this list. So starting off at number 10 is Green Arrow, number 9, Green Lantern, and number 8, the Green Hornet. Coming in at number 10, the most popular of the greens, Green Arrow. Green Arrow, Oliver Jonas Queen, first appeared in More Fun Comics number 73 in 1941. I think Green Arrow was just trying to capitalize on the popularization of Batman. He was a non-powered superhero who used high-tech gadgets and had a sidekick with a whole bunch of vehicles like the motorcycle, boat, and plane that were named after his namesake. So, back then, Green Arrow was just another Batman. Coming in at number 9, Green Lantern. Green Lantern, Alan Ladd Wellington Scott, commonly mostly known as Alan Scott, first appeared in All-American Comics number 16 in 1940. The concerned with him being a Green Lantern, he is kind of part of the Green Lantern Corps, but isn't part of the Green Lantern Corps. The history with that is really confusing. I think they fixed it in Rebirth. One of the notable differences of this Green Lantern to the other ones is he was vulnerable to wooden weapons, not yellow ones. Coming in at number 8, he is the first of the Greens, Green Hornet. Green Hornet... Brett Reed first appeared on the Green Hornet radio program in 1936. He would get a comic in 1940 by Helmet Publishing, and it would be the Green Hornet comic books that only go on for a couple of issues. Harvey Comic would pick it up a couple months later in 1940 and start off with number seven. They would start off with the Green Hornet fights crime and would later retitle it to the Green Hornet Racket Buster. The Green Hornet also had a short-lived television series, and the most interesting thing about this is his partner, Kato, was actually played by Bruce Lee. Now, the next three heroes on this list are, interestingly enough, uh, number seven was just a one-off. But his story was was interestingly interestingly enough that I wanted to include him on this list. Number six and number five are in the same vein as each other. And I'm pretty sure that they're not the same person. Number seven is the Green Ghost. Number six is the Green Knight, and number five is the Green Falcon. Coming in at number 8, The Green Ghost. The Green Ghost, name unknown, first appeared in Scoop Comics number 8 in 1944. I can't find much in the way of pictures about it, but I was able to find this. 
Apparently, the Green Ghost was a hero who used tricks to make criminals think that they were dealing with supernatural powers. Um, one of America's most notorious gangster kidnapped an inventor who had valuable plans for a television. The gangster claimed to not be afraid of the be afraid of a ghost, but when the Green Ghost used his puppets at a cemetery, he was able to scare the gangster away and reunite the inventor with his son. The Green Ghost had no powers, but beyond the clever tricks, he also used a dart gun, which was known as his calling card, and was not above using lethal force, and he did kill a gangster by shooting him in the throat with one of his darts. Coming in at number six, the Green Knight. Green Knight, Dennis Knight, first appeared in Dynamic Comics number two in 1941. Dennis Knight was a wealthy sportsman who decided to become a costume crime fighter. Inspired by the Knights of old, he became a knight himself. He is a adept fighter skilled with swords, bow and arrows, and well, archery and shields. He rescued a orphan boy from a vampire in the Everglades and made him a sidekick. He has no special powers himself. Coming in at number five, Green Falcon. Green Falcon, real name unknown, first appeared in Blue Ribbon Comics number four in 1940. The Green Falcon was a powerful and mysterious knight who served in the service of King Richard. For those who don't know, he is King Richard the Lionheart. The Green Falcon was an unparalleled fighter who was skilled with swords, shield, and bow and can use them all with deadly accuracy. He was so good with a bow and arrow that he could even hit his foe from the saddle of a galloping horse, which is exceedingly difficult to do. He was also a skilled jouster, but other than his skills, I don't think he had any special powers himself. Now, coming in at number four and number three, it may look like they were copying heroes, but I'm sure it's purely coincidental. It's definitely coincidental for number four, but number three might have drawn some inspiration from the hero that they resemble. Here is number four, the Green Llama, and number three, the Green Turtle. Coming in at number four, the Green Llama. The Green Llama, Jethro Dumont, first appeared in Double Detectives Magazine, Volume 5, Number 5, in 1940. The Green Llama may actually be older than the Green Hornet. The official continuity is kind of all over the place. He may have appeared in Pulp Stories before he made the comic book debut. He has the powers of flight, super speed, and strength, the ability to emit energy beams, control fire, and ed animal manipulation. The Green Llama is definitely going to have to be somebody I Golden Age review. He was born into a rich family. He received an AB from Harvard, an MA from Oxford, and a PhD from Suborn. He also attended Supreme College in Tibet. It looks like he may have acquired his superpowers through radioactive salts. And there's a lot more to tell about him. But we'll move on to the next one. Coming in at number three, the Green Turtle. The Green Turtle, Hank Chu, first appeared in Blazing Comics number one in 1944. And you can see who he very much resembles in this picture here. He wore a green cow with a cloak with a giant turtle shell designed on it. 
He had no special powers, but he was a skilled fighter and flew a turtle plane. He also had a sidekick named Burma Boy. When the artist was coming out with the superhero, the turtle, the green turtle is a Chinese superhero, but the publisher didn't think that anybody would be in the market for, as they described it, an Asian superhero. So the green turtle was never drawn, drawn without a mask. So I don't think we ever got to see what he looked like. Now for number two and number one. I am sure that many comic book artists drew their inspiration from their heroes from these two. Coming in at number two is the Green Giant. And no, I'm not talking about the vegetable spokesperson Green Giant. It's an actual hero from the Golden Age and the Green Mask. And number two, number one. Coming in at number two, the Green Giant. The Green Giant, Brentwood, first appeared in Green Giant number one, 1940. It looks like the Green Giant might have been a one-off comic. He worked at a brokerage firm in his regular identity. In costume, he had a power belt, which allowed him to grow to tremendous size and fly. He also appeared to be super strong and bulletproof. Um, according to the Overstreet comic book price guide, the Green, Gi the Green Giant comics was an experiment to determine if the company could be profitable making comic books. And they say that this comic never hit the newsstand, but somebody obviously got a hold of a copy of it somewhere. Coming in at number one, The Green Mask. The Green Mask, Michael Shelby, first appeared in Mystery Men Comics number one in 1939. The Green Mask went unrevealed in many of his first issues, even to the readers, where he would later be revealed as Michael Shelby. When he originally appeared on scene, he had no superpowers, but then he was retconned to be exposed to Vita Rays, which gave him superhuman strength and the ability to fly. Occasionally, he would display other powers like invulnerability or plot-needed abilities, where the, the plot where the plot dictated him needing other abilities. He also carried a gun. It was usually a revolver for those times when being super just wasn't enough. Michael Shelby was the son of a senator who was murdered by a white hooded gangster known as the Grim Circle and that would be the inspiration for him being a superhero. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was actually very interesting making this one. Did you know there was that many green heroes in the Golden Age? I certainly didn't. It's enlightening. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this video. And February is coming up. I got a whole new list of things for February. So, until next time, I'll be seeing you.